right partnership. We're one of the only states in the nation to have this organization in place. And they are working on that outreach and support between business and education. So it's interesting, you know, Michael Keith is here talking about the bond, interest rates, the challenge of construction, in, uh, inflation, and the challenge of the labor market. And we're caught between wanting everyone to go to college and get higher education and having a huge deficit in our community and in our country in the trades. And, and, and any post-secondary program is hugely important. So to me, we have to message a balance of both. And, and just, I wanna just really quick go through these slides. So we're gonna kill you with slides tonight. This is in the board packet, so it's linked so anyone can access it. The challenge is the go on rate. The state has set a goal of 60%. Currently we're at 42% uh, in Idaho's young people ages 25 to 34 hold some type of post-secondary credential. This data is a little bit old, but it was what he shared in the presentation. So this business partnership is talking about how do they close that gap. And the idea is through a workplace program and partnering with school districts as well. Um, so they've got some numbers, obviously, the more education you have, typically the more money you can make. There's always exceptions to that rule, but for most of us, that's how we have, have changed uh, our earning potential in life. Uh, a lot of discussion on the economy and how that's changed in the last 40 to 50 years and the demand for some kind of post high school certificate or training and how employers are looking for that. So education, K-12, and higher ed and business need to collaborate more to connect where those gaps are and, and to try to meet those needs. Uh, this attainment divide you know, goes back to the US and comparing Idaho as well, we're a little bit below the national average. Um, I did think of one statistic that was shared in the safety conference. Nationally, the school counselor to student ratio is one to 650. Wow. Our goal in our district is one to 250. Now, obviously there'll be some bumps in that, so we are well over double the national average of school counselors. Can I brag on our district even farther on Please? that? I came from Wyoming for 32 years in education where there's a lot of money and was a lot of money. Our ratio was much higher than when I came to Teton High School. When I first started, I had seven elementary schools. Oh, my word. Yeah. So, yes, it's awesome. Yeah. And then the reason I bring that up is not only just on the positive school culture, but school counselors are critical in supporting students and addressing this very right. need as well through college and career planning and <coughs> guiding students to post-secondary options. So obviously the future, there's a big push in education, but it's not just college, it's anything <coughs> post-secondary. And uh, President Rick Allman with the College of Eastern Idaho is really talking about <coughs> CEI and ISU's technical programs. Mm -hmm. And in fact, <coughs> they have the challenge, they have two year trade school programs and they have students dropping out of those because after one year, they already have the skill set to go get a job they don't care about the piece of paper on the wall. They're getting recruited to go work immediately. So they're trying to work on retention because they're competing with the labor force at the same time. I did want to highlight this one. It's a little hard to see. It has every county in Idaho. And it has Latah County, which is right here, now 57, 58%. That's where University of Idaho is. That's the University of Idaho. Oh, college towns but us. This is Madison County. Whoops. Don't click on it. I'll go forward. Madison County, obviously they're a big university town. The third highest in the state is right here, Teton County, at 52-ish percent. So that was amazing to me. A number of my less respectful colleagues in the room were really surprised by that. <laughs> And I just had to say, you know, a lot of our community demographics have changed in the last 10 to 15 years. And what I've seen is more often than not, people are well educated or highly educated, and they're not here. Some are here because they found a job here, 
and some are here because this is a quality of life in the area that they could live anywhere in the country but because of a myriad of reasons this is where they choose to live so they were surprised to hear that people weren't moving here just because they have a job here or in Jackson I said that's a big economic driver but a number of people can live anywhere and a they have access to high-speed internet B, they're within an hour drive of an airport two directions and they from there they commute wherever so mm -hmm. that that's to me again something I think we should brag on is the educational attainment and, and some County. retire here yeah. some retire and some choose <laughs> in January or February now where's everybody from June and July I don't see them around in January or February so again you can look at this slideshow I'll go through um, their components or partnerships work-based school-based and then evaluating it they are rolling it out they're piloting it first in Idle Falls and Nampa school districts with local businesses, and then they are hoping to scale that up in the next couple of years throughout the state. So we might be able to participate? We are hoping, and I've got his contact information and told him we would be very interested. So Great. I appreciate his efforts to get this going in Idaho. Um, you know, he sits on the Fed board for District 12. Their headquarters are in Salt Lake. They cover... 13 or 14 western states it's the biggest and I know this is the world you live in but the biggest geographical district of the Federal Reserve and he said Idaho's on the forefront of having an organization and partnerships between business and K-12 which isn't happening anywhere else right now Wonderful. so we're Teton's doing well as a county and I hope we have you an opportunity to participate with this so that's great just want to make sure and highlight that as well thank you you're welcome can I ask also because you represent the region on what is the name at northwest at northwest that from time to time share what's gone on what kind of insights or takeaways that you have for that that might relate to us or might not just educate Absolutely. us so yep. that would be wonderful i'll be in portland in two weeks and okay. and i appreciate the board's support in doing that that doesn't cost the board anything in terms of dollars that's fully covered through that organization and mm -hmm. to me it's a chance to highlight what we're doing and try to find those best practices in those mm -hmm. five northwest states and bring that back to our district <clears throat> so if you could share that mm -hmm. would be wonderful. absolutely we'd appreciate it yep. thank you okay ma'am Oh, Education Foundation. Uh -huh. okay. um, we had a very successful ride and dine. It was sold out. I think it was our most successful to date, um, which was awesome. And um, so soon we have our board meeting later this week, and I don't want to steal the thunder, but there is um, we do a really cool aspect where it's paddle raisers where or just like we do a live auction and then it's like, okay, like if you didn't bid on an, op an option or an item, here's an opportunity um, just to contribute just straight to um, a project. And um, the projects this year, I think were music, um, robotics, and also Expedition Yellowstone. And I think it was really successful in those three particular areas, um, which is really exciting. Um, next week is hearing and vision screening. I think Pam is still looking for a couple of volunteers to help with um, vision and, or the vision side, the hearing. We have someone do it because it's a little more technical. Um, and so if you have time next week to be able to help with that, um, Pam, I know would appreciate and she can tell you where she has holes in that. And she sent something out too. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Great. Thank you. So you can't Eight. say if it was the biggest. Oh, I think it was. That's yeah. kind of what I yeah. picked up. Yeah. No, it was a very successful, um, I think it was our most successful this year. I just don't have the numbers right now. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Nice one. ABC. Thanks. Um, so our programming this year, we started one month earlier compared to last year. So we started about a month ago. And um, our big focus of just starting early was just to keep the kids in a safe environment, focus on snack, getting them some food, and just, again, just keeping them safe until their parents were done with work. And that's been going really well. Uh, we have a couple new hires, some high school students, some bilingual students are on our staff. And they've just been very invaluable for just helping communicate with children and parents and just help us deepen some connections that we didn't have before. Um, 
And then right now we've been really working with Megan. We have a force of about 17 volunteers. So a big part of our program is um, academic intervention. So we've been working with Megan on um, identifying which kids have needs and then just really nailing it down in which specific area. So then we'll take the volunteers and like group kids in the specific area where they need help. And just so the approach will be much more targeted this year. So we're really excited about that. And so each volunteer, instead of just for literacy, just not really knowing where to focus. I mean, it'll just be like on vocabulary or spelling, um, letter knowledge. So I think that's really exciting. And Megan's been working really hard and helping us and we're so appreciative especially after hearing everything that's on our plate. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we had volunteers coming in today, so that was very exciting. And uh, Pat Willert and Alice Stevenson mm -hmm. have just been very instrumental in helping launch this too. And mm -hmm. yeah, and they're volunteers as well. And they're just very dedicated to our students and seeing them thrive and do well. And then just organizationally, um, when ABC started, we were really heavily under the umbrella of the school district. Mm -hmm. And just as, we, as we've as we you know received our own 501c3, um, we're trying to more differentiate between ABC and the school district. So we have our own bank account set up. Um, we're doing our own payroll now. So we're just mm -hmm. making some steps to organizationally stand on our own. And that's all going really well. Just think, a couple of years ago, we were we were we were desperate we were we didn't want our after school program to leave us and then all of this transpired and look at where we are now i mean it's wonderful it's great i just can't say enough either to have i've always viewed after school programs as being more supervision mm -hmm. and it's just so much more yes. so Thank just, you. Yes, thank you. So, I don't know about anybody else, but it is except. Oh, to you. Angela! Thank you. You're right in front of me. <laughs> Go. <All right. laughs> Sorry. I'll just be brief. Um, first of all, I just really want to say how much we appreciate um, teachers being um, asked to be a part of the various committees that have been founded. Um, this summer and this fall. I think it's just really crucial to our morale when when we are, when we, we feel valued, when we're, our voices are heard and we have an opportunity to give input in the processes that are going on in the district. So I appreciate that. Um, the, so TEA embarked on just a little journey to just kind of have one-on-one -on -one informal conversation with the people who are running for school board so that we could kind of, you know, get to know them and they could get to know us and the things that concern us and um, the things that even concern the district as a whole. So um, that we finished that up a, a week or so ago and we felt like that was really val valuable for both sides. Mm -hmm. um, we had good turnout on that note at the Rotary Forum mm -hmm. um, for the school board candidates. I thought that was a positive experience for all. Um, we had, um, so IEA, uh, the political director for IEA has um, initiated what he's calling a legislative action team. And what he is hoping to do is to create, um, he, to, to help admin, or not administrators, um, teachers create relationships with uh, legislators mm -hmm. and so that we can go to bat for the district interests and our interests as a whole and not just as a union but to try to bring our voice to the legislature um, and do some you know activities and relationship building before the next le next legislative session starts so um, I and another teacher um, Susan Christensen went to that meeting to get some training about what that's all about. And I'm feeling really super optimistic about our ability to get members, you know, teachers' voices heard, and hopefully that will really benefit our district. 
Um, we hope. And that being said, I went to a training over the weekend um, where a large part of Friday afternoon was talking about um, some of the things that are going on the, in the legislature and that the governor's task force has now gotten four recommendations um, or he's been given four recommendations and one of them is to uh, work on increasing veteran teacher pay. Okay. We're really feeling optimistic about that. Um, one of the things they're talking about that they've recommended is all day kindergarten. Um, but of course, uh, we want to make sure that that gets funded. <laughs> so not a mandate, um, just um, that it gets funded. And then also to bring some PD um, for social emotional needs of students to our districts so that we can better serve our students that are in need that way. And then um, the fourth recommendation was district funds um, flexibility. Um, so, so anyway, I'm feeling really optimistic that as, as we get this legislative action team going through our membership and through the IEA, that we'll be able to bring some positive change and just kind of mobilize so that, so that, so that we can help out. That's great. <laughs> we can help our own cause and <laughs> help our kids. Excellent. Um, let's see, and I think, yep, I think that's all I need. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's just, it, as I was saying, it, it is great to hear the people sharing, the people talking about how positive <laughs> things are, um, the things that are being accomplished um, all across the board. Um, so it's, it's just really uplifting. And I think it's, it's great for our community to be able to hear the kinds of things that are happening in the school district. I mean, to listen to people talk um, and share what they're actually doing is fabulous. And we really appreciate everything that people are doing. So thank you all. Okay. Um, moving on to a bond construction update. Did you want to do something else before? Well, we, we just have those two things. I don't think it'll take long to do, and then we can break. Okay. <coughs> so a lot of times I just talk. This time I want to refer people to the school bond website, tsd401bond.org. Uh, we work closely with Headwaters Construction to set this up to share information with the community about the bond. And I should do a better job of letting people know this is where you can go to see updates mm -hmm. on the project. So myself, when available, or the project superintendents more often are going through and updating a list of items that have been updated in each school, and then where appropriate, posting updated photos. Nice. So on this website, anyone that wants to see in the school and what's happening, can go to the bond website and click on that school. You can go back another month and see. So that was Driggs Elementary. I'll just quickly show you the highlight and the summary. There's Victor, that landscaping went in uh, just last week. Uh, Topsoil is being spread, obviously. So there's a short narrative for each school project and work that's happening. Uh, and then big picture, I know I'm going through this quickly, but we're all ready to stretch for a minute. Uh, Victor and Driggs are very close to being at the same point of construction due to uh, the classroom size difference between the two schools, where Victor has four less classrooms than Driggs. Uh, mirror image floor plans, a little different color scheme. Obviously here's Rendezvous, and as I get to Rendezvous and Tetonia, we are hosting an open house at Rendezvous that is Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Oh, sorry, Titonia is Wednesday at 7. I'm too old. Titonia is Wednesday at 7, and Rendezvous is Thursday at 7 o'clock. So there'll be some different officials from Headwaters, hopefully from GPC Architects, to be there to answer questions and showcase the school so you can see the addition and some of the renovation work that happened at Rendezvous. So then you just click on the all bond to go see the others. Here's Titonia. That's the front office. Over the weekend, they were finishing some heaters, working on some of the countertop replacement. There's the addition, teacher workroom. This is the new library on the north side. Oh. 
Uh, food service will be doing the cookies. That probably just doubled our attendance this <laughs> evening. So here's the work happening at the middle school, and even that's a little outdated. The gym block is up to elevation. So they're making great progress on the middle school. They tested the fire alarm at the middle school. <laughs> I told them the middle school staffs, the expectation is if there's a fire drill, they should not have to go back in the building. It should be a one-way fire drill. So I passed that along for the middle school. Uh, here's the high school addition. This is the auxiliary gym, roof trusses and decking going on. Uh, VOAG's been finished, good narrative detail. Uh, this is the outside of the cafeteria wall on the south side where all the block, uh, the brick was demoed off of that. And uh, just recently, the blue board insulation has been put up to keep it warm. Here's um, a skid steer in there demoing that wall. This is a classroom addition with roof truss. So there's wood trusses over the classroom addition and metal trusses over the gym addition. So a great place. You know, obviously I'm working closely with the architects and headwaters daily on everything that's going on but I appreciate their extra effort to put this out there for us and the communities to get a real-time update on what's happening with all six projects. <coughs> just want to make sure people are invited to the open houses at Rendezvous and Tetonia this week. Can you Wonderful. click on either the Ruse or Tetonia and then scroll down. Keep going. There's a bar at the bottom that's really awesome. Project completion. Part. It's hard to see, so, and if the projector's good, this cable right here is bad, and I told IT we can live with the yellow projector. They need to take care of the schools first, so yeah. that's why the color's still weird, so. But yeah. on all of the projects, you can see, like, that bar track will track and sort of show you how far we are making progress, which I think is just a really, like, it's easy to glaze over a bar, but. Um, yeah, there's a little school 23. <laughs> And that's nice. Yeah. So it's, um, and Monty, I have a question for you, and I apologize for not telling you I was going to ask you this ahead of time. Um, with Tetonia and Rendezvous, how are we, are we, in the GMP, there's like a date that if we, if they went beyond that date, then some things would happen. And I'm not describing this very well because this is not my realm. Um, are we approaching those dates of when Headwaters said that they would be completed? Yes. Um, and are they complete, the yes. projects? Okay. Yep. So the projects are on, they are complete, they are on schedule. Okay. Uh, that question has come up a lot, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, even though we will be on schedule working on final inspection punch list certificate of occupancy from our experience and the crunch for both Tetonia and rendezvous i've told them a we want to hold them accountable to meeting their schedules yeah but we need more time on our side to get mm -hmm. systems set up before we actually move in mm -hmm. so specifically the it network system the security camera system the door lock um, security access systems have taken quite a while. Now, granted, we were inspected and safe and ready to get in the building. Yeah, we have our COs, yep, but they're still... Exactly, but all of those have taken some time. So I'm following up on Tetonia and Rendezvous, and then we are planning ahead for Victor and Driggs. So even though the tentative deadline just off the top of my head is the middle to end of January to be completed, mm -hmm. it will be end of February to early March before we start moving in. Mm -hmm. Because we need some time between all the subcontractors finishing their sub list, then our staff getting in to get systems set up before we're trying to move in, have school rolling, and have more frustration than we need. Awesome. Yeah, great question. No, I was at Tetonia today, and they they still are don't have the doors um, set up yet. Right. And yep. I mean, I asked Monica, and she's like, "Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm getting my communications on um, yep. that." around when people are going to be there and things like that. And there's a balance of the subcontractors and our network staff as there was so much uh, remodel and upgrade work that happened yeah. really that was part of the project and then some of that was out of the project. Well, in today's world, our network and our internet are just as crucial as our electricity and our water and our power. Yeah. So when those systems are down, so we're working through a lot of those issues. And then some, some days it'll work and then some days it won't. 
So again, we're all troubleshooting to get that finalized. So, so Monty, with that, um, you know, you're talking about IT and never, you know, us getting the systems in, and we're giving ourselves what a month. <coughs> right now, it's four to six weeks. Okay. Now, during the summertime, we weren't in session as far as school. Correct. And so, there's also other demands placed upon our IT department Correct. and our maintenance staff. You know, to keep buildings going mm -hmm. and business rolling. Right. So just, you know, looking at that schedule as well, you know, is Absolutely. that enough time? Yep. And, and, and I'm trying to work. guide them to sub out as much work as, as we right. possibly can. Okay. I'm, I'm having those exact discussions with them, so I'm glad you're aware of that. Thank you. Yes. And Please come to the open house. It'll be, <coughs> I mean, even though there's a lot of interesting experiences and growing opportunities we've all had this year getting people into the new buildings and new spaces Sorry. it's it's awesome it's phenomenal yeah. walking in and i yeah like i was at Tetonia yeah. today and um for the pizza for the full circle um farm garden pizza and there were some parents there and they were just so excited um on seeing the space and poking their head into the library and i mean it's just yep I think it's the most beautiful library anywhere. And, and I think our message messaging has to be consistent. The community passed the bond. The community invests in these schools. These are the community schools. So this is the return on the community's investment. So we all get to be a part of the process, but it's not my school. It's the community school. So very, we're very fortunate to have a community that's willing to invest in these facilities. One for our students and two for our staff, mm -hmm. and that is in order of priority, and then three for our parents and our community, mm -hmm. because our schools are the recreation centers. Mm -hmm. When some of us grew up, it was the local gravel pit, but now it's kind of a little nicer, but yeah, they're just awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so then moving on to I, signing um, the civil rights grievance, um, um resolution that was adopted at the last meeting we just had to put our signatures on it and make sure that the the different changes were um, completed within that and that was sent to us uh, to review so here's the document for everyone to sign okay. and i don't know if each board member just wants a copy of what they're signed over there sure. Sure. go ahead and pass that so the changes you all talked about was changing the meeting date to July 16th. That was completed. Um, taking out the Teton School District um, options. Adding the administrative team to superintendent. And then removing number two. Mm -hmm. So those have all been completed. So um, if it looks good, it's, it's ready for everyone to sign. Thank you, Diane. Thank you for yes. doing that. Mm Completes item I, so we are break time. Um, so let's be back at um, about quarter of nine forty-five. Nine forty-five. Okay, back at nine forty-five. <laughs>
What we first need to do is amend the budget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> amend the agenda. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> um, because as pointed out to us, Thank you, thank you. Um, when we did our consent agenda and we did personnel, we forgot to do the special situations. And so we need to go back and do that. So can somebody make a motion to amend our agenda and in, in, insert this? Make a motion that we amend the agenda to cover personnel, special situations at this time. Second. I second that. 